Hey Scott District 2, it's time for a quick review of Keynote Basics. Emphasis on Keynote, emphasis on Basics. If you want to open up a Keynote, you look for the icon down on your dock. Keynote icon is that cute little podium. If you don't have that Keynote podium on your dock, you're going to need to open up the Applications folder. You're going to need to scroll down until you find a folder that's called iWork. Click once on that folder and you see the different components of iWork. There's Keynote, click and hold and drag Keynote down to your own dock and now it's ready to be used. Right now Keynote is not on. You know it's not on because there's no light underneath it. But if I want to wake this up and turn it on, I'm going to click one time. I'm going to make that happy bounce and now Keynote is operational. Light is on and at the top bar it says Keynote. Remember as you go from program to program to know what your active program is, you look at the top and it tells you what you're operating in. As mentioned in the Mac tutorials, the first thing you do in a keynote is choose your theme. There are lots and lots of themes, and as you roll your cursor over the tiles, you get the chance to see what slides might look like if you choose that theme. I'm going to take us today to Storyboard. It's one I've been using lately, and I think it has a nice look to it. I'm going to double click and open up Storyboard to the first slide. It automates you to a title subtitle slide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click in the box just as it says. I'm going to put in a title for our show. And for fun, I'm going to put in a subtitle. Add a little bit of intrigue there. I click outside the box and there I have a finished first slide. It's pretty basic. It's pretty standard. If you want to do some crazy things with that slide, you certainly can do so. You've got a lot of different masters. Some have picture slides in them. Some are just bullets and text. You can also go to a blank slide and do some creative additions through adding text box shapes. And we'll show you in a little bit about adding pictures. But right now, this is our starting slide, Digital Kickoff, The Adventure Begins. I'm going to add a second slide. I'm going to hit the New button, and it automatically gives me a slide that has a title and it has some bullets that I can add in and as luck would have it that's what I want to use. So I'm going to double click in here and put in the title of my second slide and this is a sneaky way to see if you remember the five goals for our digital initiative. Watch as I type and see if I can spell. And there we have it. I'm going to click outside of the box, make that white active box go away, and I have my second slide. I've got initiative goals and the five main things that we're trying to get from our digital initiative. You notice this second slide is represented over in the navigator. Now I'm going to make a third slide and I'm going to do something a little bit crazy. My third slide is not going to be the same style. I'm going to go to masters and I'm going to go blank. By having a blank slide, I can do anything I want with that slide. I can put in a text box, I can put in pictures, and I'm going to show you some of that function right now. Let's put in a text box. You don't even need to click anywhere. You just start typing. It's an active text box because it has the white line and the two little white bars there, two little white squares that tells you that that's the hot box, so whatever you're doing is going to appear in that box. And I'm going to go ahead and add a couple things to remind you what we did at our kickoff. Uh, first thing that we did at kickoff is we talked about the uh, digital. Second thing we did is we had a My Big Campus uh, snapshot from Julie and Susan that shared with us a little bit about how they use My Big Campus in their sixth grade science classrooms. And we had a MacBook basics uh, module in which you get a chance to do a little video and do a little work uh, operating uh, your Mac. Uh, Jason set us up with that and taught us some interesting things about the Mac. And then we closed with our final module of kickoff which was uh, where we had some tutorials that Jason made about My Big Campus and hopefully you got a chance to uh, look around in My Big Campus and open up your initial page and maybe start building that house, uh, putting together your 
uh, class structure, how you can use my big campus uh, for next year. You'll notice right now I have a very boring centered box with text, but I'm going to get a little bit crazy. I'm going to click inside that box and make that an active box. Once again, the white lines around it, I've got my little white squares. That means that if I move this box, I move the whole thing. I'm going to move this around a little bit, and as I move it, you'll notice some yellow lines appear on the screen. This is a wonderful feature of Keynote. You get a chance to do automatic centering. Right now, right to left, boom, I'm on center. Up and down, boom, I'm on center. I'll see if I can get something perfect here. Come on, there we go. Right now I know I'm on center. But you know what? I don't want it there. I'm going to add a, an element to this slide. So I'm going to throw this over here to the left. I do want it centered. And I'm going to add a picture. The easy way to add pictures is to go to your media button. In your media button, you have a chance to add audio things, movie things, or photos. Through iPhoto, if you have photos loaded into iPhoto, and that's a whole other uh, program, I'm not going to go into that today, you can just click on that photo and drag it over and you can put it into your slide. The pictures I took of the kickoff are not in iPhoto yet. I've just dragged them onto my desktop. So we're not going to use the media button. We're going to take a bit of a shortcut. And I've got this picture sitting right here on my desktop that I'm going to drag in. Uh, Rick, don't look. Don't look, Rick. Don't look. Rick, don't look. I don't want you to be scared by how big of a picture we just put of you into this screencast. There we go. There's reasonable. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out where I want that picture of Rick to go. And as luck would have it, once again, that little yellow line shows up to tell me that is centered. So now I have a picture of somebody at the kickoff with some uh, reminders of our kickoff activities. So that is slide number three. Um, media is one of those important buttons that you can use to import things. Another important button I want to remind you of is Inspector. Inspector allows you to do a lot of different things with your slide. It tells you how you can set up your slide. It gives you a chance to transition from slide to slide. If you want your slides to spin in, you want your slides to twist in, you can do amazing things with that. It also allows you to build different effects. Uh, one of the things that I think is just crazy about middle school kids is that you need a motion sickness pill to even watch a youth uh, PowerPoint because they try to put in every bell and whistle and everything spins and everything's in motion. You have that same capability in Keynote and uh, this is the place that you would take care of that. Inspector is where all the good stuff, all the creative stuff happens. You can also do some things with your text, uh, some spacing and alignment. You can do some things about your uh, normal text functions out in the box, but if you want to go to Inspector, you can get some advanced functions. And then there's things all the way across the board. I won't go into much at all except to let you know that there's a really nice feature in Table. I am a master of uh, ill-planned tables. If I run something that is four rows by five columns, I quickly realize I needed to have five rows by five columns. And if you find yourself putting in a table and it's not the right size, you can go here to edit uh, rows and columns, click on that wheel, and you can very easily change your table to meet your needs. But that is all in Inspector. That's the button up here in the upper right hand corner. We're not going to go there right now. This is just a quick review of our kickoff. I'm going to put in one more slide. It's going to be a little bit of a fun slide. We're going to do some other pictures. We're going to use a slide uh, standard called Photo 6 Up. I really like this because it's got a really nice set of photos already there, already for us to put some slides in over the top. And I'm going to double click and I'm going to edit uh, and I'm going to put in some uh, shout out to our cohort, cohort number one. Alrighty. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start importing a couple more slides. Once again, I'm not going for media. I'm just going to pull them off my desktop. I've got some pictures of you guys. I know you're going to love taking a look at some of the friendly faces from the kickoff training. And there's some of the folks that attended our sessions, working diligently, demonstrating adult learning at its best. And there's six slides that have already dropped in. They're already pre-sized. And that is a very nice looking professional slide. But I'll show you one more thing before we save this slideshow. There's some neat features whenever you work with a photo, and this is not a photo demonstration, but I want to show you something. If you click on an image, you have the ability to do some different things. First of all, you can move the image, uh, just like anything in the, in the slideshow, in the keynote. But um, one thing you know is that you always get that yellow line to let you know when things are centered. Uh, one thing you can do is you can shrink 
or uh, zoom or uh, backup on a photo, and that's pretty slick. You've got your little picture here, your big picture here. I'm going to slide, and I'm going to zoom in. Oh, my. No, I'm not zooming in. I'm going to back up a little bit, and I think that picture was just fine the way it was. Sorry, Kevin had to have a little fun with that. But if I do want to zoom in on a picture, and I zoom in, and it's not in the place that I want. I had tried to zoom in on Greg, but obviously centering that, it didn't get there. I'm going to go to Edit Mask, and that brings up the entire picture. You can see that it's in the background here, and I've got a little hand. And that hand, when I click and hold, allows me to drag that entire picture, and I can center Greg right there, and I can click outside that box, hit my Edit Mask, click outside the box, and boom, I've just brought that picture uh, much uh, closer probably than Greg wants. So we will go ahead and, and back that back out. And I'm going to have to go to Edit Mask and bring that picture back over to the box where it was. But I uh, just want to show you some of the nice things that uh, can happen with Keynote. It's got some really incredible ways to uh, do presentations, incredible things you can do with pictures. And I just encourage you to play with that because you can have a lot of fun making slides, uh, putting together some nice pictures and presentations for your kids. Likewise, I think your kids can put together some incredible presentations for you and for their peers. So before we close out, I just want to make sure that we uh, look at this slideshow, make sure that we like it, that it's the way we want it. We're going to click on the very first slide, and we're going to go to the play button. And that's going to allow us to look at our slide as it would during an actual presentation. We've got our slide one. We've got slide two. We've got slide three. And we've got slide four. And that looks fine to me. We're going to go back to the beginning, and we are going to save this slideshow. We're going to go to Save, and remember, it's very important that you save things under the proper titles in the proper places. I'm going to call this Keynote Basics 2011, and I'm going to save it in a folder called Cohort Training Docs. I do want to point out that down below, we have the opportunity to save this as a PowerPoint. But know that if you save it as a PowerPoint, you lose some of the functionality that you put into this. It's not going to translate perfectly. So eh, I'm going to use this for Mac users. I'm going to make this for Mac people. So I'm going to leave it in Keynote, and I'm going to save it. And ladies and gentlemen, that is Keynote Basics. And thank you to all of you for a great digital initiative kickoff.